Hello! In this video, I'm going to show you how to find some of the important information from database sources and how to put those sources into Noodle Tools. So I'm already in my project. Uh, in the interest of time, I've already found the sources and I'm ready to put them in. I know that I want them, so I'm going to skip the searching feature. Um, part one, the first video, I showed you how to enter websites, which is why we already have four sources in our source page. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the first source. The first source I found using the Gale Opposing Viewpoints database. And that's important to know. It's important to pay attention to how you got into it. When you find the source, pay attention to whether you accessed it through Google or whether you went to our library page um, and the database is there to get to it. So I already said I found it from opposing viewpoints, so I know it's a database. So when I go to create my new source, that's the first thing I have to click is database. Now I need to know what kind of source I'm looking at. And databases can have sources from basically anything in there. So if you remember from the video on different types of sources, or if you haven't watched it yet, you should do that. Um, databases kind of collect and store sources that have been published elsewhere. So we could really be looking at anything that's on a database. So to figure that out, we're going to go back and look at the source itself. And there are a few different clues we have. The first is just the fact that this is a table, which is a kind of reference information. The second clue we have is this information plus reference series. It uses the word reference. Um, and so those two are pretty good clues that tell me I'm going to be citing a reference source. So I'm going to go down to that option. And Noodle Tools is going to pop open the field that I need for entering that reference source information. So the name of the database I already said was Opposing Viewpoints. And anytime you start typing in the name of the database, it's going to suggest um, an option. And if that's the right option, just click it. For URL, it's really important not to use the search URL above, but to actually get the stable URL from the Get Link option and to pop that in. When you search and you get the URL from the search, that URL is specific to your particular search query. So if that's the one that you save, you're not going to be able to get back to the exact same source. You really need to go to that get link place and save the stable URL. We're always going to put in the date of access. Then I need to figure out who created it. So if I just look at the information here, I might be compelled to think there is no author. But one of the things you should always do when you're looking at database articles is scroll to the bottom to see their source citation information. Now, you are probably going to be tempted to just copy and paste this and put it into your work cited. But I'm going to encourage you strongly, very strongly, not to do that, in part because you're going to have errors. First, if you just copy and paste this, it won't be the right font, it won't be the right color, it won't have the right size indent, it won't um, have double spacing. Secondly, I can immediately spot an error. And if you already saw the web citations video, you already know that the problem is that in MLA, titles, um, the words in titles have to be capitalized, everything except for prepositions, conjunctions, and articles. So that is a mistake. And because I already see a couple mistakes, I'm going to be cautious that there might be some other mistakes here. So what I like to do is use this citation information to help me enter it into Noodle Tools so that I have a little bit more control over what that citation looks like. So I see here they've included an author. So I'm going to type that author's name into Noodle Tools. And if there's more than one, you add contributor. The article title or entry, I'm going to copy and paste. And I'm going to correct all of my capitalization errors. P 
pages. I don't need to put pages in because I'm looking at something that is accessible online. The reason we put pages in is when we're using a PDF or even a hard copy of something, we have to be able to help people find the information easily. So if we're looking at something searchable, we don't actually need that. Um, contributors to the reference source as a whole. When I look here, I don't see an editor listed. I don't need to spend too much time probing around for that, especially because I have an author for the source itself and that is the most important information. Um, reference source. I don't think it's an encyclopedia. I'm just going to call it other. Title of reference source is Women in American Society. And I know that because it's telling me that's where it's from. That's also what I have here. Um, this is where the title of a source goes in an MLA citation. So that's how I know that's the title of the source. There is no information about it being a multi-volume set. Um, the publisher is Gale. So I know that because that's what's provided here. I also know that because it tells me here. So again, there's a couple of different ways to get that information. The year it was published is, actually we're gonna say 2010 is this one. 2010 ed doesn't necessarily mean that's when it's published. I'm gonna show you what that is in a moment. The publication city, I don't need. Um, edition is 2010. And what's going to happen, I'm just going to put 2010 here, but because I've put it in the edition field, when Noodle Tools puts out this citation, it's going to have the ED beside it. Series name I do have. And I accidentally copied a little extra, so I want to make sure I delete that. And that looks like everything I need. Okay, so there you go. There is a reference source from a database. The next thing we're going to look at is a periodical from a database. So this I also access from opposing viewpoints. I'm going to again get my stable URL so that I have that for Noodle Tools. New source, the database. Now I have to figure out what I'm looking at. And there are again a couple of different ways, whoops, that's the old one, a couple of different ways to do that. Um, I can tell it's a periodical because volume number and issue number are given. They give me the source and I see that it's a hyperlink so I'm going to click that to see what else is there. Um, and it tells me right here it's a magazine or a journal. It's not an academic journal um, because those are scholarly journals usually published for specialists and people in higher education, and this is a K-12 publication. So I'm going to cite this as a magazine article from a database. Again, my database is opposing viewpoints. I copied my stable URL. I don't need a DOI. I'm going to put in today's date. Authors of the article. Let's go back to the article. Author is here, Eric W. Robelin. If there was more than one author, again, I would click Add Contributor. Title, I'm going to copy and paste and then edit. Always edit those titles. That's the most common error that I see. Gender gaps persist in STEM subjects. That looks fine. Strides is a noun, capitalized. Schooling, noun. Uh, often, adverb. Don't verb. Spill verb. Over and into our prepositions, the is an article, so I don't need it. Workplace is a noun, and look, Noodle Tools stopped yelling at me, so I know I'm good. Pages, again, I don't need because I'm looking at something that's searchable. Name of the magazine is Education Week. It was volume 31, issue 35. The publication date was June 13th, 2012. And I'm done. 
Easy Breezy. So that's a periodical, a magazine specifically from a database. And finally, I want to show you how to do some smart searching. So what I mean by that is sometimes we find things on Google or Google Scholar that we can't get. So I did a search for women disengagement engineering in part because I already knew what article I wanted. And when I go to it here, um, I see it's from Sage Journals. And when I, I want the whole thing, it's going to make me pay almost $40. And I don't want to pay $40 for an article that I might not even end up using. So what I'm going to do is see if I can get to this article from one of our library databases. Remember that databases are special because not anyone can access them. It requires a paid subscription because this information is usually a very high quality. Academic journals are peer reviewed. They're published in you know professional outlets. So a lot of that information isn't going to be available just on the World Wide Web. So I'm going to copy the title of the article. And I'm going to search in our library's journals. And the best place to do that is to go into JSTOR, which is not under general reference. I'm not sure why, but I know it's under literature. It's probably also under psychology and social studies. JSTOR, as the description here tells us, is a database for really high quality academic journals. And since this article is from an academic journal, I want to see if we have the academic journal. So I'm going to go into JSTOR. I've already logged in, um, but it's going to ask you to log in, and you'll do that by using our library, whoops, too many pop downs, our library database passwords, which is password protected. If you need the password, email me. If you're not my student, I'm not giving it to you. Um, okay, back to JSTOR. I copied and pasted the article title, so I'm going to plug that in. And this is when I get that warm, fuzzy feeling inside. Because I found it. I found the whole thing, a PDF of the whole article, and I don't have to pay for it. So, since I found it through JSTOR, I'm getting rid of this one. I'm not using that information anymore. I'm only going to use the information from JSTOR. So I'm going to go back to create my source citation, database, and it's a journal article from a database. So the database was JSTOR. I need to again find the stable URL and JSTOR gives it to me right here. Today's my date of access. The author is Aaron Sekorchek. And I only have one author. I can copy and paste the title. I'm always checking that it's correct. It looks good. Pages. I'm using a PDF, so I need the pages. And they're here. Pages 42 to 72. It's also here. I could scroll through, but I don't have to because this sort um, citation tells me. And then when you're doing in-text citations, you need to give the page number in your parenthetical citation as well. The name of the journal is Science, Technology, and Human Values. It is volume 39, number one. And it was published January 2014. And from what I can tell, it is not a series. If it were, that information would be somewhere in this citation. Note that this is the like not an MLA format. So just take care of that too. You're not going to copy and paste that. Um, and then again, I'm done. So there you go, three database citations, three different types of database citations, along with a little bit of tips on how to do some smart searching when you can't find the article that you want from Google Scholar. I hope this was helpful, and I will see you soon.